In this video, I will show you two different methods in solving modulus inequality. The first method that we can utilize on will be squaring both sides of the modulus inequality in order to get rid of this modulus or absolute value. We can have a look on this example. You can choose to expand it by putting a square on left and right hand side. However, look at this specific example. We have these two modulus or absolute value on left hand side of the inequalities. If you were going to expand it on the left, it's very hard to do so. So the best way is to make sure that there's only one modulus on each side of the inequality. So in this case, I choose to move the other part of the modulus to the other side. So this is what we have now. Okay. Now, as you can see, there's a modulus on the left and the right hand side, and it's easier if you square it now. Okay, we'll do a square on both sides of it. Huh? We're gonna square the left hand side. And we can do it on the right hand side as well. Let's square it, expand it. Alright, this is the part I need to guide you a bit. Imagine this is a minus b square. When you expand it, you will have a square minus 2ab plus b square. Right? So this is your a. 64 minus 2 a b plus b square the modulus is gone because you square it when you square it modulus is not significant anymore so look at this modulus inequality that is a modulus here still we need to do something about it later and that is uh, power 2 here. You need to expand this. Oh, this is, uh, you can simplify it. Make it 16. Keep this modulus. We are not going to do something about it now, but later. Expand this. Okay, simplify this inequality, equal value on both sides, you can cut it off. Because 9x squared minus 9x squared, it means 0, right? So this is the part you can cut it off as well. Okay, now we have a look on this modular sign. In order to get rid of this, maybe it's easier if we, change, if we take this as a subject. So in order to make this as a subject of the inequality, we are going to move it to the left hand side. Easy to be referred. So it becomes 16, no more minus. So it's just 16 modulus 3x minus 2, less than equal. 64, nothing, just 64. Collect the like terms. Okay, so we have negative 24x. Okay. It's this is what we have now. Okay, in order to remove this, uh, you can choose to square both sides of it. Am I right? Yeah, you can do it now. You can square both sides of it. But I, I choose to simplify it first. I choose to simplify it by putting this on the right hand side. Okay, and then I simplify it by divided everything by 8. Okay. There we go. Then, in order to remove this modulus, we apply the same concept again. We are going to square both sides for the second round, for the second time. So we square the left and we square the right hand side.
2 squared. Bring this 4 over times 4. Collect the like terms, or before that, I think you can simplify this part, it's the same value. So you can just cut it off. Collect the like terms, so 27x squared. Collect the like terms. Expand it, divide the whole thing maybe by 3. Okay. So have a look on this. This is actually a quadratic inequality. Look at the shape of the quadratic functions. The a is 9, a positive a. So what is the shape of the quadratic? Right, u shape. The u shape with uh, what is the root? How many roots are they? You can factorize it. You figure out that the roots will be negative 4 over 3 and also 4 over 3. There are two roots of it. And we are looking for the part that y has to be less than equal 0, meaning negative part of it. Look at the shape of the curve. This is the part where your y is negative less than 0. So just this part of the graph. And in order to describe this part of the graph uh, uh, for y value, the x must be between 4 over 3 and negative 4 over 3. All the x value here will give you a corresponding value of y which is negative. Not here, right? This is all positive. So we are taking the x between negative 4 over 3 and 4 over 3. The final answer should be x should be between negative 4 over 3 and also 4 over 3 including negative 4 over 3 and 4 over 3 as well. So this should be your final answer. So once you have this range of x, you can check your answers. Say I take one of the number in between negative 4 over 3 and 4 over 3, say 0, and I can put it back to the original equations. I can put 0 here, I can put 0 here. And then I can check whether this inequality is valid or not. If whatever I get from the left-hand side, it is smaller or equal to 8, then it is valid. That range values of x can be accepted as a final answer. If it is not less than or equal to 8 when you put in a number within the range, meaning you have to reject the answer as well. So I will show you the first method on how to solve modulus inequality by squaring both sides for two rounds. You square it at the first round here and you square it at the second round here. Now I will show you a much simpler method is called plus minus method. Have a look on this example. Modulus x equals 3. What could be the possible value of x in order for do you have an output as 3? So you can put in, of course, you can put in 3 here. If you have modulus 3, you still get 3. What else? You can also put in a negative 3. Am I right? If you put in a negative 3, you still have 3 as your output. So in short, x can be a positive 3, x can be a negative 3. You can put it here. So I want you to understand that uh, whenever I want to remove a modulus, I want to remove this then there are two possible output, two possible input that it could be for x. It could be plus or it could be minus. Plus, minus. In short, whenever you remove a modulus, just make sure you write plus, minus on the other side. Okay? You remove this modulus, you, go in, you have to write plus, minus on the other side because there's two possible input. It could be plus or it could be negative. It could be positive as well. So we now we're looking back to the original question itself. Original question, we have 3x plus 2 plus 3x minus 2 less than equal 8. There's two modulus over the same side, so make sure you move this to the other side before we start working on it. 
And once you do it, change the operations. Okay. Now let's do the step number one. Step number one is I want to remove this modulus. And whenever I remove this modulus, there are two possible output. I have to put a plus minus on the right hand side. Am I right? So I put a plus, I put a minus two possible input, right? For the left hand side. So whenever I remove it, I remove it now. Huh? So it's just 3x plus 2. It's just 3x plus 2. No more modulus. And once I remove it, what happened to the possible input? Uh, I will have to put a plus on everything on the right. Okay, plus. And I have to put a minus on the right hand side because it could be plus, it could be minus. All right. But since this is an inequality, when you bring a negative over to the other side, you have to flip this. So it becomes more than equal. And then everything on the right. Okay, there you go. So the first possible input is could be plus and minus for this part. Okay, we continue from here. It changes nothing because when you multiply a positive one, it changes nothing. Okay, this is what you have now. And then on the other side is very different because when you multiply this in, it changes something. Okay, if you look at this, that is a modulus here. So we are not done yet. We have to make this a subject again in order to do the plus minus again. So how do I make this as a subject? I move this to the left hand side and the rest on the right. Okay. I'm done. What else? Oh, simplify it. 6 minus 3x. Okay. We pause for a while. We work on this part. Same thing. I want to make sure this is a subject in order to remove this modulus later on. How do I make this as a subject? Or oh, I can actually keep this on the right since it's positive rating. So the rest on the left. And I rewrite it again. So I start reading from the right hand side. So it is uh, modulus 3x minus 2 less than equal 3x plus 10. Okay. All right. So you see, it's a very different modulus inequality now. In order to continue from here, I need to remove this modulus sign. This is the second time that you do the plus minus. Once you remove uh, modulus, you're going to have a plus and minus. So there are two possible output. It could be a plus, it could be a minus. Okay, if it's a plus, nothing changes. 3x minus 2, no more modulus. Less than equal 6x minus 3x. Okay, we collect the like terms. 9x, 8. Oh, 6x, sorry. 6x less than equal 8. Um, so x less than equal 4 over 3. You need to check this later on whether it's correct or not. Okay, what if it is a negative? If it's a negative one, then you have to flip this one. All right, because it's negative, right? Negative bracket 6 minus 3x. Oh, you have a problem here. Tut, tut, x is gone. So if x is gone, this will be rejected. It is not possible. Right? So we reject it. 
Okay, the other side of it, um, well, I have to break it in two parts as well. I want to remove this. I will bring it over uh, plus minus on the other side. Plus minus. So 3x minus 2 less than equal 3x plus 10. And your x is gone, meaning it's rejected. Okay, on the other side. 3x minus 2 more than equal because you bring a negative over negative 3x negative 10 because you bring a minus over so correct the like term okay so eventually uh, the four output here two are rejected these two you can check the answers whether it can be accepted or not or you can also check whether we can combine this or not. Okay, let's talk about combining this. Huh? Imagine you have a number line. You have a negative 4 over 3 and you have 4 over 3. Okay, you have 4 over 3 as well. Look at the first one. X less than 4 over 3. So 4 over 3 less than that. And X must be greater than negative 4 over 3. There you go. So the answer is between these two part, right? So the answer is between negative 4 over 3 and 4 over 3. So this is your final answer. X is in between negative 4 over 3 and also 4 over 3, including these two reference points. And you can take the answers between these two, say 0, you put a 0, into the original equation, like how what we did just now. You can put it here to check whether it's valid. So eventually it's valid. So this should be the final answer. All right. Thank you.